wanted to do this particular off the cuff, um, I guess I'll say segment of the Black Prospector show. We're going to talk about a real tough but sensitive topic. And um, before we get into it, let me say, please like and subscribe. Again, likes don't cost you anything. Please subscribe and feel free to share. And I really want you to feel free to share this particular show. The reason is because this is a tough topic. And I also have an opportunity to promote my oldest son's channel as well, his podcast. Uh, so please check that out. I'm going to leave a link in the box down in the description uh, or also down uh, wherever you're listening to my podcast. Please check out his podcast as well. Uh, he's just starting out and he's making me very, very proud at what he's doing. But on his latest, um, you know, I was fortunate enough he was able to fly out here for my second son's wedding uh, a few weeks ago. And so it was great. We got a chance to spend some time together for the first time in a few years. And he went back home and he did his podcast. So I did not know what he was going to say. He sent it over to me and I'm just checking it out as always. But it was a rough one to listen to. And it was reminding me of the mistakes that I made as a father. And I'm thankful for the grace that he has given me in light of my mistakes as a father. And so one of the biggest mistakes that I've made as a dad, and I know this is going to probably be a little bit controversial for people listening, but let's, let's kick it. Hey, feel free. When I put this up on YouTube, go ahead, uh, discuss it in the comments below. Um, I'm saying this is what I did. All right. Let me specifically say this is what I did. And this is a decision that I made. It might not be your decision. It might not be for you. That's fine. But for me in my house, this is the decision that I made. And that decision is some years ago, I don't even exactly remember when, but some years ago, I stopped whooping my kids. Now, the reason I said it that way is because for most black families, that's what we call it. You know, I think if we had to operationally define how we view these things, you have getting a spanking, you know, you have getting popped, getting popped might be your mom pulling out that wooden spoon, the one that she used to mix up the Kool-Aid, that's the getting popped. Or once she opened up the drawer and she goes upside your head, that's getting popped. Or that might be your father slapping you up on the backside of your head, oh, my own glasses off. Um, and then you have getting spanked. Now getting spanked might be a hand, you know, they, they pop you on your butt, I just said pop, but no, it's more of a spanking. You might, if you get more than one, it's probably because if you get two or more, that's a spanking. If you only get hit once, that's getting popped. And so, you know, got spanked. That's with the hand. Then you get whooped. Now you can get whooped. Whoop tends to be anything from your mama's house shoe that she pulls off with the rubber bottom, you know, and, and man, imagine the days before women ran around and started wearing, uh, what do they call those shoes now? Um, you know, the ones they, that we used to wear at the beach. Uh, you know, every all women have like 15 pair of them. But back in the day, they had house shoes. And when mama pulled that house shoe off of that rubber bottom and it flexed, ooh-wee, got lit up. It hurt. And then dad might get you with that belt. Dad comes on, and when he takes that belt off, and I remember my father had a thick black leather belt with – Probably it looked like the CBS logo. It was this huge, um, uh, I don't even know what the metal was made of. It was like that big as a belt buckle. But that thick black leather belt that he had, yeah, I, I got it with that one a couple of times. And then my mother was from the South. So this, this kind of was a little bit more in the whooping stage where when she would get that switch, that switch that sometimes, you know, it's like we out there cleaning up the backyard yeah, kids, we cleaned up the backyard back in our day. My dad cleaned up the backyard. My mother will look and see, and, you know, we're cleaning up, taking, cutting down the bushes, and she sees something like, this will make a good switch. Go on in and put it in the house. And so and you don't want to get one that, that you know, one that grew in the springtime where it's not brittle. It still has some flex and bend to it. Oh, the one that makes that noise whoop, as it cuts through the air. Yeah, mama, mama got me with the switch. And then we cross over into, again, this is me, my, my, operationally def, my operational definitions for this stuff. Uh, but in my book, you get over to beating. And you got beat when your parents pulled out the extension cord. I only got the extension cord once. Again, ironically, it was from my mother. It wasn't from my dad. 
Matter of fact, I think I can probably uh, count the number of whoopings that I got from my dad. Um, but most of the popping and the the uh, borderline beating I got, that was from my mother. And so, um, yeah, you know, it was, I think once or twice I got the extension cord from her. And so what did I do? When I had a son at 19, I started disciplining him the same way that I had been disciplined growing up. Same thing that I watched all my cousins get disciplined by their parents. I mean, I remember one of my cousins, two of my cousins actually getting um, uh, whipped by their mom. And I think these dudes were like 15, 16 years old. Now, I remember they laughed about it because, you know, they were like, oh, it didn't hurt. Now, they could have been lying anyway, just to say it to me. But, you know, oh, it didn't hurt. Um, but either way it goes, it just goes to show that prevailing attitude that is in the black community on hitting the children. And so for quite some time, I hit my kids. And now that I look back at it, I'm certainly not saying I regret all of them because I still do believe that there is a time and a place and that it can play a role in discipline. But I read a book that changed my life and it was called Shepherding a Child's Heart. And I ended up teaching it at a class in church and that book totally changed me. There were some other things going on in my life as well that played a role in changing me. But I remember making that decision that I'm not going to be hitting my kids any longer. Now, the great part, well, you know, especially for the four kids that were raised completely in my household, really them getting any kind of spanking or whooping was even getting popped. Didn't happen that often. It really didn't um, because they knew the rules and they knew that I meant what I said and I said what I meant. So in other words, I didn't have to play the mama game of you better not do that. All right. I said, you better not do that. Don't make me get up. Don't make me come over there. One, two. No, 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 no. I don't play that game because as I would tell them, if you think I'm going to count one, two and three, and you wait to not do something because you're going to hold off until I get to three. You don't know whether I'm coming on one. You don't know whether I'm coming on two, but I'm coming because I told you what you should and shouldn't be doing. And so, you know, obviously kids test you, kids test you. And so that's why I'm certainly not saying I'm throwing the baby out with the bathwater, no pun intended with this issue. But at the same time, as I, as I was alluding to, you know, the kids that grew up in here knew how dad was. So rarely, wasn't necessary. And I think how I disciplined had a lot more love in it. So, you know, I've, I've talked to my kids about it, uh, certainly apologizing to them for anything that I've done to them that may have been too far or was not done with that fatherly love. Because one thing that shepherding a child's heart taught me was that many times when we hit children, it's not out of love. It's because they did something that we don't like. It's because we frustrated and had a bad day at work. It's because our wife pissed us off. It's because my husband pissed me off. When the case with my oldest son, his mama pissed me off. I was upset maybe about something that, that I felt he was in collusion with, going along with. And so being able to separate it that it's not him, it's the situation. And as I told him later on that, you know, a lot of things that happened to you, it didn't happen to you because of more of a, a conflict between our relationship. It just had a, it was conflict between me and, me and your mom because we weren't in the same house together. And I would later on learn being married that you still have those same conflicts with your spouse. The difference is that the child realizes I can't just run and go to mama's house or go to daddy's house. I can't just ignore your rules because you put the kid on punishment. And, you know, if, if both parents are in the home and mom or dad says, I don't want you going out of your room, you're going to stay in there. I don't know, maybe because of uh, some bad grades you got or something don't leave that room, then the child knows, okay, I don't want to leave because, you know, the other parent is going to snitch on me if I come out. Instead, when the child is in two separate homes, well, you may put the child on punishment because of what they did in school or for something else. And then they go over to the other parent's house and you find out, well, what you doing going outside? I thought you were on punishment for two weeks. Oh, well, mama, let me go out because, and I learned a few things. Number one, sometimes many women don't continue along with the punishment, especially single moms, because why? Well, they have a son husband. And so for her, putting him on punishment is basically putting her on punishment. She wants to go out. 
So it only makes sense that she's going to take the child out with her. But of course, that causes acrimony. That causes confusion. That causes both parents to go at each other. And so, as I told my son, you know, a lot of things between me and your mom, it was just because we weren't in the same households. We weren't on the same page. But you'll have those same conflicts even with your wife or any woman that you live with in raising children. But let me go back to where it really gets complex. And that's when it comes to discipline. I shouldn't have laid hands on my son as much as I did. And I want to encourage many of you black men out there especially we hear the stories of like adrian peterson and we immediately go back into well you know they kind of deserved it you know the u.s that's how it is raising kids and if i don't do it the police gonna do it you know they're gonna go ahead and, and lay hands on them too so i need to go ahead no no i don't think that's a valid excuse because number one when we watch the police lay hands on another black man we always still ask was that really justified and secondly, when the police lay hands on anyone, there's no love in that. They aren't required to have any love. They are coming down with discipline and supposedly justice. And we already know how that goes. So it's not the equivalent. We say, well, if I don't do it, the street is going to do it. Well, that's not necessarily true. I think the reason why we come along with that false equivalency and we come along with that trope is because we once again want to be polarizing. We want to have both sides. We, we want to talk on completely opposite sides of the spectrum and we act like there's no middle ground. No, if you don't spank your kids, if you don't whoop your kids, that does not mean that they're going to go to prison. You know why? Because I know folks went to jail and they fathers beat the brakes off they behind. It's a whole lot of dudes sitting up in prison right now. They mamas beat the brakes off they behind. And you know where they at? They in prison. Because one thing is shepherding a child's heart. Listen to the title. It's what is in the heart of that child. And as a shepherd, what are you doing? You're leading that child with what's already in their heart. So that may even mean that the type of discipline you meet or out with one child, you may not need to do with another. That may mean that, yeah, you know what? Some kids might have to get popped. Well, maybe other kids, all you have to do is just yell at them or just raise your voice and immediately they may stop. Instead, we want a broad brush and either we want to just say, I'm never going to hit my child again, or, or I'm never going to hit my child. And then people tend to let the children get away with whatever they want to. And you in the black community know what I'm talking about, because we all describe those white parents that are in the store that let their kids, we, and I used to work in the store, so I know, let the kids go crazy in the aisle ways. Ah, ah, ah. What do we say? You, you pull that on me. <laughs> Your black folks don't take that. Uh-uh. So maybe the problem isn't the fact that that child isn't getting discipline at all. They're getting no discipline because discipline is not just corporal discipline. It's not just hitting them. Discipline is also instructing them. Discipline is still metering out justice for what they have done. But that doesn't mean it has to involve anything physical. Many times I think as parents, if we don't know our children, we don't even know what works. So that, that's part of it there. And, I, you know, and I, I might ramble a little bit because so many things are coming to my mind. I want to get out. But I think even if we look at the school system, I, I go back to the years in, when I was in elementary school, I got paddled, I guess we say spanked, one time by the principal, Mr. Allen. Um, I honestly don't even remember what I did, to tell you the truth. But I remember going to his office and him pulling out that paddle and giving me a couple of swats. And then we get to those years that I was in a Catholic school. That was the worst because I saw what was borderline on beating. I saw sisters, and I ain't talking sisters as in black women, although they were, but I saw sisters that were, you know, in, in the parish, worked at the school. I saw them beat on kids on a daily basis. They will pull out that pointer, which again is, is almost no different than the switch, except it's about that thick and then it gets narrow. It's the same one back in the day they used to use to point at the board. And so, when a kid gets out of line, what is that? That nun would come up, walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. And we consider this to be, well, that's just what goes on. That's what happens in our community. Those, those kids deserved it. But then we watch something like Roots, where we see some brutality. And then we see the white man doing it. And it's like, oh, wow, they beating us. And then we watch 12 Years a Slave. Just, wow, how many times are we going to get whipped and beat? 
But then all someone has to do is just show us footage of what's going on in our own home. What's the difference if we just go ahead and change the color of the person doing it? I guess the question is, did we retain that violence from our slave masters 100 plus years ago? Why do we still hold on to their methods of so-called discipline with our own families? And so when I read that book and taught that class, Shepherding a Child's Heart, I made a decision that no more. I can't think, I have a relationship with my kids that it's not even necessary because they already know. They have that respect for me that when I say or when I do something, there are other things that I can do to make their life miserable than having to go there. And secondly, am I always going to be able to do that with the right spirit? The answer is no. The answer is completely no. Because especially as they got older, now I'm more angry because for years and years, they may not have been doing what I asked them to do or what I told them to do, or whatever the case is. How old are they going to have to be before I say, you know, I'm not going to hit you anymore. And so maybe I can say it was easier because it's the time of life that my kids were. But as I said, I mean, I saw my cousins get hit well into their mid teens. Uh, so that's not necessarily the case for everyone. But the point that I want to appeal to you and. You know, certainly uh, shout out to Dr. Tiasan Johnson. I mentioned him on my program all the time. Uh, he did a video on this actually pertaining to Emmett Till that ended up, and forgive me, I didn't even have this prepared. I told you I was just shot, kind of shooting off the hip. Um, there was a, a video that a woman did, uh, a college lecture, if I remember correctly, talking about Black people hitting their children. And I think it's something that we need to start really analyzing and start taking out of our community. I think we really need to start thinking about that because as a leader, and I'm the leader in my home, why do I need to come down with such punishment? If it gets to that point, y'all got to go. I view this the same way. If I ever had to sit up there and lay hands on my wife, it's time to go. <laughs> it's time to go. No, ain't gonna be no fighting up in here. Why? Because if it's somebody on the street, if it's somebody on the street that we got to get to physical altercations, we ain't being friends after that. Mm -mm. This isn't the schoolyard where we have a physical altercation and we shake hands and hug and be like, okay, okay, we best friends again. Uh uh. If it gets to that level, if it gets to that level, then the relationship must cease. <laughs> Things must stop. And so if it gets to that point where now, especially when your kids get older and you still feel the needs that you got to lay hands on them, and I ain't talking about the holy way in church then it's time for somebody to go. Either you better come up with another form of getting your point across, or it's time for them to move out because they don't want to be in your home and abide by your rules, whatever your rules are. Um, but we need to take the violence out of our community. And I'm not saying this as a pacifist. I'm not saying this as someone who's saying, oh, you should never, uh, you, you know, always turn the other cheek. Mm -mm. Just talking about this with my parents. I think the biggest hoax and joke in the world is when we look at what happened with Dylan Roof and you get, as soon as it's over, all right, I forgive you. I forgive you. I think that joke, that, that forgiveness gets played on Black people way too much. So I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you should be completely passive and you total nonviolence means that you don't even, uh, uh, well, again, I don't think this discipline should not be violence in your home. Maybe that's the whole point. Is your discipline violence or is your discipline compensatory? In other words, are you making it right? What are you trying to make right? How many of us have ever even given a thought to how and why we discipline? How many people are married? How many people had children with someone and they never even had the conversation of, well, how do you plan on disciplining the kids? One person's like, well, I think I'm going to use an extension cord because that's what was done on me. And the other person is like, well, I believe that a child should never, ever be hit. There are going to be some problems inside that home with those children, because even the children are going to play on both parents and their different set of rules. So something must come together. An agreement must be made. So in conclusion, you know, I'm, I'm going to say for me, I made the decision not to hit anymore. And listening to my son express himself, which I'm glad he did on that podcast, was yet another time that just made me remorseful for those years. It made me remorseful for those times. Now, don't get me wrong. He was hard headed. He was definitely hard headed. But to be honest with you, 
I knew, or I know now, I didn't know at the time, but I know now, had my son been living with me full time, we wouldn't have had half of those spankings or whoopings. Wouldn't have happened, but he didn't. And that complexity and drama adds even more to it. So dads, if you are a single dad and your children come over for visitation, you may want to inspect and think about your discipline uh, uh, protocol even more. Because again, the discipline comes down, but they don't get the love. See, my other four that lived with me, that even when they were younger and I spanked them, then that comes that part of after, after I may have calmed down or after the situation is over. And again, I shouldn't even be, be interacting with them when I'm hot. Shouldn't even be doing that. I certainly shouldn't be putting my hands on them when I'm hot. But the other part of that is that with your kids, when you're able to, to now, when they live with you and the situation is kind of removed, that's when we had those dinner table conversations. Like my oldest daughter would probably be like, oh, you're talking again. Well, you know what? I am talking because now I'm telling you what you did wrong, why it's wrong, and what we can do to make sure why it doesn't happen again. So, yeah, we're going to talk about it. But when your child doesn't live with you, you may discipline them, you hit them. And then next thing you know, the only, they, only, they have only been at your house for 48 hours or so. And now y'all both got an attitude with each other the whole visit. And then they go back over mom's house. And now, you know, mom is like, well, what happened? You know, daddy whooped me. And then mom got an attitude and she calling you. And whew, number one, be careful of the situations that you get into, because these are the conversations nobody necessarily going to be telling you and talking to you about with blended families. And when you're talking about, I can have a child and don't need a father. I can have a child, don't need a mom. And then it doesn't matter. I can do it just, mm, these these are the things and the complexities that you have to deal with. Uh, But again, let's come up with alternative ways. Me hearing about my son saying that was remorseful, but I'm glad I heard it because it made me do this podcast. I sent him a text. I'm like, you know, you gave me some stuff to think about for my show. And perhaps we'll get on here together and talk about it. But for me, nah, nah, I'm out. I'm out. I don't need to use my hand. I don't need to use a belt. I can just use this. I think I can just use this and be okay. Now, again, that's my choice. Uh, And yes, there is a time in which my sons uh, get up to a certain age where I think some things are totally justified. For example, the time I stepped to my mom, all I remember is saying something to my mother. And all I remember is my father's backhand. And I remember looking up at the ceiling. And he said, I won't say it because we might have some YouTube censors on here. But he said, if you talk to my wife like any blank on the street, I will treat you like any blank on the street. Yeah, that was using this. And there was also a reason for him to use his hands as well, because dad wasn't going to allow me to stay in the house and treat his woman that way. And I'm sure mom appreciated that protection also. And so I'm not saying there won't be some times when that's necessary. Some of you, I remember when I was uh, in jury duty, really almost two decades ago, there was a case in there where I think the young man was 15 or 16 years old. He was the same size as his stepfather. And unfortunately, his stepfather was put in the role of disciplining him by the mother. That's a whole topic for another day on how many single mothers are dating dudes or they marry a dude. And then they have him discipline the child. But then when he goes too far for her liking, oh, well, now we're going to bring him up on child abuse. Well, Who's to say he should have been disciplining another man's kid in the first place? Just because he was at home playing, playing uh, a yo, yo man doesn't mean that that's that child's father. Because there are some issues that come along with that. I'm sure many of you dads who have been uh, who who have been stepdad to to another man's children with another woman, you've probably heard that. Maybe that kid said, you ain't my daddy. Well, that's how that kid is viewing that. And that's that's mom's fault. That's not the kid's fault. So don't go in on the kid for that. That's mom's fault for putting that child in that situation. But we ended up finding this man. Actually, let me finish the story. the the kid the stepfather tried to discipline the son i can't remember what the son did 
And he actually, he was old school. He used an extension cord. But the thing, the reason why it escalated to that level is I guess he tried to say something to the kid. Bottom line, it escalated because the kid was basically like, look, I'm as big as you are. What's up? And so instead of the older guy just, all right, putting up, putting up, you know, that, that four piece nugget. Instead, he got old school and pulled out the extension cord. Like, oh, you think you can whoop me? Well, I'm going to whoop you. And it escalated. And we ended up finding the gentleman not guilty looking at all the evidence. And uh, I remember I was like, man, this dude probably been in jail for I don't know how many months because he kept having the same clothes on at each trial, at each day of the trial. And so I look at that and it's like, we found him not guilty because there gets a certain age where this young man was basically no different than that dude out on the street trying to whip him. And I don't mean whip as in with anything. I mean, whip him as in with his fists, with his hands. And yet, huh, we seem to uh, now look at back at that and say, well, maybe that's child abuse. And I say, well, maybe that's self-defense. And that was kind of how we viewed it in light of all the evidence, because y'all know you like to always pay attention to evidence with the police, right? So in light of all the evidence, that was our decision. And so again, I'm not saying you need to be completely passive and, and with your children, not at all. But perhaps if that would have been his child, maybe it would never have come to that. Maybe a 15, 16 year old wouldn't have stepped to him that way and tried to whip him. I know I wouldn't with my dad. I mean, I always view my dad as being like Marvin Gaye's father, no matter how old he is. If he got to come to that, I may be leaving here. And he may, he may not be able to hang with me physically, but I still had that respectful fear that he's going to get me. <laughs> he's going to get me. And so um, these are the tangled webs that we weave in some of our household formations. But um, anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, think about why you discipline your children. Think about if it's necessary to hit your children. And... I have to say, men, for those of you who are involved with a single mom or you're married to a woman and you're raising another man's child in your house, you need to really think wisely on if you want to be in that role of doing anything physical with that child, because it might backfire on you. There are too many cases where it has. Again, if you want to leave your comment down below, feel free. Tell the story and let other people learn from it. Um, but overall, no, nope, for me and my house done with the spanking done with the whippings uh now it's all about respect i always say i don't need a woman's love i don't need anybody's love but i want your respect because love especially romantic love means really absolutely nothing but the respect i want my kids respect and i think my kids can respect me even more when they realize that Yes, I am a parent that may be hard in their eyes with what I require. I'm a parent that I may have rules that seem really restricting with discipline, but I'm also a dad that has love for them. I will lay my life down for them. And the reason why I discipline them in the first place, and if we hit them, sometimes that message gets lost in the medium. But the reason why I provide for them I talk to them, I spend time with them, is because I do love them. And that's a love that means something, not a romantic love and not a love just based on a feeling. It's a love based on me fulfilling my role in my house. That's how it's been for me. Maybe your mileage may vary, that's fine. But I just wanted to, definitely wanted to throw that out there and talk about it uh, in light of my son's show. So thank you for uh, listening to me ramble on this one. Again, a little off the cuff. Um, it's good to do these every now and then. So um, with that, have a fantastic day. Remember, like and subscribe, Black Prospector Show. I'm your Black Prospector. Always searching for the goal that relies in me, relies in my children, and that lies in anybody that I can interact with because I want to know their story and how they got to where they're at. So with that, also check out Every Black Man Has a Story on the channel. And listen to really how some of the other men navigated growing up with fatherhood and with children. Have a great evening. Holler at y'all later. Peace.